boundary committee meeting for um, January 17, 2019. Welcome. Introductions. Let's start over there. Frank Hayden. Now that I have, now that you put food in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Anytime. <laughs> Good evening. Happy New Year. Charmaine Postal, Palm Beach County Councils of PTA, PTSA. Good evening, Nellie Titcomb. I reside in the city of Atlantis. Good evening, Madam Chair. Scott Singer, Boca Raton Mayor and Representative from the League of Cities. Okay. Good evening, Angela Santa Cruz, Support Technician. Patrick Sippel, Demographer. Happy New Year. Good evening, everyone. Jason Link, School Manager, School Enrollment and Demographics. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Shane Sertor, Director, School District Transportation. Good evening, everyone. Jen Mark, uh, with Transportation Director of Shen. <laughs> <laughs> and Nancy Gribble. Virginia Ferris, I reside in Lake Clark Shores and appointed by the Superintendent. Uh, Cynthia Begton in Riviera Beach, appointed by the Superintendent. Roseanne Brown, I live in Riviera Beach and I'm appointed by board member Dr. Deborah Robinson. Carla Donaldson, uh, appointed by the ESC Advisory. And um, the demographer? Well, that's new. Yes. Can you give us a little? Um, yeah, it, I introduced yeah. Pat at the December 20th meeting. Um, he, he's our new demographer, came from uh, Broward County, which I believe he was at Broward County for about 10 years? 14. Now. 14, okay, I was a little off there. <laughs> wow, that long. Yeah, so we hired Pat from uh, Broward County. Um, uh, so he's got vast uh, experience in the school projections and, and attendance zone changes and uh, our uh, school choice, school choice um, and everything to do with uh, the demographic world as it pertains to uh, student enrollment. All right. Planning schools. And you have your crystal ball. Where is it? <laughs> I guess I didn't. <laughs> okay. One, just just want to know. Okay. And our, our sitting down member is? Oh, hi. Sorry, I've, I'm late. I'm You're not late. Salvador. You're fine. Hi, you're Nancy Salvador. Salvador. Uh, Barbara McQueen. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And with that, we'll go to the, any announcements? Um, no announcements. Uh, we, we checked the public. Um, there wasn't any public comment. We did have one comment. There is a, an ABC member that was uh, unable to attend, so he asked if he could please um, submit his uh, thoughts on, on these uh, studies in writing, and we included that in your packet. So if you'd like to uh, take a look at that at some point during the meeting, please feel free, but um, that will do it for announcements. Okay. Then we are ready to deal with the minutes of the um, 11, 15, 18 meet, meeting. Madam Chair, okay. move approval of the minutes okay. from the 11, 15, 2018 meeting. Okay, there's a motion to I'll second move, it. And there's a second, Roseanne and Nancy. Any discussion on that motion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor, could you please raise your hand? Okay, the minutes of, the, of November have been approved. May we interrupt this to have our last attendee introduce herself, please? I'm sorry, I'm uh, Janet Meeks, and I've been appointed by the superintendent. Thank you, Janet. Okay, with that, I, Jason, I appears you on. Okay, let's we'll begin with uh, study SH1. Um, I've been, numbers haven't changed. I've the purpose of this um, tenant zone <coughs> change proposal. The purpose, the reason we brought this forward is um, Highland Elementary and South Grade Elementary. Highland is the second most crowded elementary school in the district, only behind uh, Verde down in Boca Raton. So sitting at 114% fish utilization with, with constant growth each year. So we reached the point where we, uh, the need to relieve the school is, uh, is urgent. 
henceforth we're bringing uh, forth this proposal to relieve Highland. Also, in association with this is um, South Grade Elementary. which is the fourth most overcrowded elementary school in the district behind Verde, Highland, and Calusa. Um, also with accelerated growth trajectory uh, for the next five years. So uh, if we don't relieve that school at this point, they're just going to grow and grow. And they're currently 121% of their fish capacity, 108% of their available capacity which includes their four concretables. So they're, they're already pushing 110 of their available. So we're looking to relieve these two schools and, and to better balance enrollment in the, in the Lake Worth area by shifting, <clears throat> this is the area of Highland, the area in blue, we're proposing to shift the area in blue to Palm Springs Elementary, who's about 82-83% um, utilization and the area in purple, this is the canal, the um, L11 canal separating two areas, uh, the area in purple to Barton Elementary, who's a very large school, about capacity of about 1,400, and they're about 60% utilized. So they, they have a lot of available seats at that school. So that's to relieve Highland. And for South Grade, uh, we're seeking to shift uh, its SAC this is the, the this sort of rectangular area is the entire sack, but we're looking to split the sack at Third Avenue South and shift the, the purple region to Barton, who also, as I previously mentioned, has um, additional capacity to accommodate those students. Um, that will better balance enrollment over the next three years. There is a, a new development in the, in the Highland zone, so that will allow Highland to absorb uh, those new students as those developments are constructed over the years. Um, 288 new units coming uh, into that, mostly apartment units in the Highland Zone, so that will help better the school better uh, uh, accommodate those students as uh, families move into those developments. Um, as I mentioned at the December 20th meeting, um, although and here's just real brief, you know, briefly, uh, here's what we're looking at. Without a change, the Highland project at 115% next year, South Grade at 109 of their fish, excuse me, 123 of their fish, 109% of their available next year, excuse me, the, 20, the 2021 school year, they're at 127 and 113, and Highland's nearly 120. So if we don't do anything, now, we're, we're just pushing this. this. You know, middle high schools can accommodate these high utilizations much better than elementary. The elementary is just, when, once, once you're approaching that 115 range, it just becomes uh, very, very, very difficult for the principals to accommodate that, that large enrollment. So with the change we're looking at, and Barton's at 60, projected next year. With the change we're looking at Barton at 79, better utilized. Highland uh, down to 95 from 115. Palm Springs from 82 to 93, and South grade 98, and then the next three years. Highland from 95, um, then 92, because the fifth grader, the current fourth grader is becoming fifth grade and their siblings are permitted to stay. Once those students start, phasing, start begin to phase out, you know, that, that'll um, lower the numbers a bit. And then third year, 93%. And so they said, uh, 102% fish and 90% available, so that much better. Palm Springs, 93%, 90%, and a fourth, fourth better utilized school. So as I mentioned at the December 20th meeting, although the parents didn't come physically show to the ABC meetings and express these concerns to the committee, they did make these concerns, um, express these concerns to their principals, specifically at Highland and South Grade. Um, this is in relation to the, the dual, the in-house dual language program that currently exists at um, Highland and South Grade. So both those schools currently have in-house dual language, but they currently don't exist at Palm Springs Elementary and Barton. So the parents had concerns that this is a great program, our, our children are thriving in the dual language program, but if we are to move, we aren't, and I, and I think for the most part in a lot of the communities, they understand why we're doing this to relieve the crowding, but they really are thriving in some of these programs and they're requesting how, how can we continue in dual language. So um, 
for next year, as it may be, it was already pre-planned actually before this, Palm Springs is beginning an in-house dual language program only for K and first grade, but not for any other grades. Barton doesn't have dual language, it's not planned for next year. So we're currently exploring establishing a dual language program at Barton, but the earliest we would be able to establish that is not for SY 1920, which is next school year, but the following year, SY 2021. So this has been brought to the attention of district leadership. So district leadership is currently examining the option of allowing all the current Highland and South grade students that are enrolled in the dual language program to remain at Highland and South grade for next school year. So that would increase these utilizations at Highland and South grade and decrease the utilizations at Barton and Palm Springs until those students begin to phase out we would uh, look to establish the dual language K-5 at Palm Springs and K-5 at Barton. And um, once those students phase out, then the Highland and South grade will begin to come down. But if that's a leadership decision, <clears throat> um, it's a programmatic decision um, that wouldn't be uh, um, attached to the, the actual physical attendance zone change that would be recommended. Um, and that's something that's will be determined, you know, when this comes to the board programmatically, hey, can can those students remain in their dual language programs at Highland and, and, and South grade? And we've got the, the numbers breaking down and the exact numbers. So that's something district leadership is currently examining. Um, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. And- I ask a question about that. Could you just explain the dual language program to everyone? It's, they both have Spanish dual language. So it's, it's a, um, it's, um, There's, so there's it's sort of a, a, a dual English, uh, Spanish curriculum. Not, not there are- in both languages. Yes, for, as far as I understand, I don't know if- I'm a principal of South Oh, awesome. South Would you mind coming up and, <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better <laughs> guest speaker. <laughs> there are, and I know there are teachers specifically trained uh, in the dual language program, but best source right next to me. Basically, dual language, um, what they're receiving in English is exactly what they're receiving in Spanish. So the curriculum is no different. So their learning takes place in both languages. So um, what they start learning, reading, writing, and speaking occurs both on the English side and on the Spanish side. So we create a, a schedule so students are exposed to both um, it's not just I'm learning how to speak Spanish, I'm learning how to read, write, and read in Spanish, as well as in English. So um, we do all of our math in Spanish, we do all of our science in Spanish, oh. all the reading is in both, and um, social studies is in Spanish as well. So these st students um, learn um, both of these languages starting from kindergarten. So. The results are that these children are thriving. So these parents are very concerned, thinking now my child is going to another school and they will only be exposed to the English side of the curriculum. They won't be allowed to continue to learn in both languages and again to foster that Spanish as well. Um, so it's, it's been a concern. <clears throat> Sure. Yes, go ahead. Madam Chair, can we have her state her name for the records? Anna R.C. Gonzalez, principal at South Grade. Are the majority of the students in this program English language students or already Spanish language students? It is a complex school in that um, although my students are um, categorized as Hispanic. Um, the majority of the students do come from Guatemala, um, and although Guatemala is a Spanish um, spoken um, country, they speak 21 different dialects. And mom and conjugal are not Spanish, as I would speak Spanish to another Spanish Hispanic person. It is a dialect. So when they're coming, they're learning Spanish as a third language as they would be learning English as a second language. So sometimes you have students who are speaking language, you have some students who only speak English, and then you have some students who are coming in with a dialect 
learning two new languages. Can we enroll? <laughs> <laughs> it is a um, it's quite a phenomenon to see how um, students learn in this program. We're expected to know everything that they are to learn in English on the English side equally. So obviously, parents are very concerned seeing how well their students are doing in this type of program. Also, that they're keeping some of them their native language. Um, and they're biliterate. You know, they're becoming biliterate um, students, and to, to hear that that opportunity won't continue for them, obviously that's where the concern lies with them. And what you're saying, Jason, is we don't know the number yet. How many? He said he well, did we know do know the number, number. yeah. It did? Yeah, yes, and I. I is it? Um, it's like 33. <clears throat> Yeah, I reviewed that during the last meeting. Jason, why you look, Madam Chair? Yes. Jason, why you look for that number? Is that number reflected in the um, number that you had um, for the projective move of 100 and? No, that that was just that was just the, the purely the, the the attendance zone change with allowing the current fourth graders who will become fifth grade next year and any of their siblings to remain. That Thank doesn't you. include. Um, allowing the dual language students to remain as well. I do have those Thank you. figures. Madam Chair, uh, do, how do you get into that program? Is it just voluntary, you sign up for it, or you take students a Students start in kindergarten. So um, they start in kindergarten, and I have so many students that come from, you know, from Guatemala, and that's what's unique about South Grade. The majority of our students are coming from Guatemala. I was at a different um, elementary school where the, the student population was highly Hispanic, but they were coming from different countries. You know, the Dominican, from Puerto Rico, from, but these students are coming from Guatemala. So what happens is if I have, um, in third, fourth, and fifth grade, if mm -hmm. I have available seats in my dual language program, a student who's coming from Guatemala who does speak Spanish is able to transition into the Indian fairly quickly, because to a language that they already know, and then they're learning their, their, their is English. So if you're coming in from a Spanish spoken country and you're already speaking Spanish, in the higher <coughs> grades, I can put you in that program. However, in the higher grades, um, I traditionally don't place students in that program if you're not already speaking Spanish, because it does become very difficult. Did you find the numbers? Yeah, so from the area from Highland to, well, let me start with South Grade, then we have the principal has kindly joined us. Um, from South Grade to Barton, um, that portion of SAC uh, 214B, there are a total of uh, 34, that's K, current K through three, because fourth graders can remain regardless, 34 dual language K through third graders. The area from Highland to Palm Springs, uh, there are 18 K through third graders, and from Highland, the proposed area from Highland to Barton, there are 48 K through three dual language. So what would happen if leadership would decide to allow those students to remain? Um, next year, Highland would, let me throw on the numbers so I can. Instead of, <coughs> So instead of 95, if we allow all those dual language students to remain, Highland would be 102%. South grade, instead of uh, 10, instead of 98 98% of fish, 87% available, taking into account their concretables, they would be 103% of fish, 92% of available. And then Barton, instead of being 79, increasing to 79%, would would uh, decrease to 74%. And Palm Springs, instead of 93 would uh, decrease very slightly to 92. And it would just be a matter of those students eventually matriculating out. And um, Palm Springs, the intent is to establish the start K, K1 next year and then eventually K5. And then the intent is to hopefully then establish a dual language program at Barton for SY20, beginning in SY 2021. You know, that's a program issue, but if the board had does decide to allow these children to stay, does that mean they won't accept any new students from those SACs into the program at that school? So they'll be, because they'll be bounded to. Right, it would be for only existing, any current student, current SY, 
18, 19 student that's currently enrolled at Southbury, that's currently enrolled in the dual language program would be permitted to stay. Any new student would, would then have to attend. I mean, if a new student moved in in the summer, they would be anticipating <coughs> that would attend, if the board would approve it, they attend their uh, new school, which would be Barton. So if a sibling is going to start first grade and is, and is to go to one of these schools that's starting a program, say they're in the um, Palm Springs, would they then go to Palm Springs or are you going to keep? Oh, you're saying if there's a dual language sibling? Yes. Well, that, that actually is a, that raises another question. That's the gonna, that'll also have to it's be a, a leadership, programmatic oh, no. leadership okay. decision Something whether to, to grant about. reassignments in those situations temporarily at, it wouldn't provide that immediate relief. So that would be a leadership decision whether to allow those siblings to, uh, uh, you know, uh, for us to grant the, them uh, reassignments. Without that, yes, then they would be anticipated to shift to their new school. Jason, can you go back to the um, Google map where you had Palm Springs and Barton up and down, blue and purple map? Um, I think it was the first one. The high, uh, Highland? It was high, that one. Right. So zoom out. You're proposing... So you're proposing the, the south of... I can't see that far. <laughs> south of um, the L11. south of the lake, it's the Barton Elementary. The, it's it's the uh, L11 canal. Okay, the, the canal. canal. Okay, south of the canal, that's purple, is going to east of 95. Uh, correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there are uh, there are areas of the Barton zone that are, already exist east of 95. Okay, in this particular area. Um, I can show you here. Here here's uh, Barton's in green. Okay. So you can see all this green. Here's 95. This is the Barton zone in green. So there's, oh, um, and it's actually contiguous to this area. So that, that area already is assigned to Barton. It's just, this area is, the proposed area is just north. And they're already east of 95. Excuse me, west. So they would shift east of 95. So there's a large portion of the, ba of the Barton zone that, already, that is currently so west of So what I'm following is, are they currently getting bus to Highland Elementary or? Yes, there, I, I believe. Yes, they are. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. There, our That's transportation director is here. Yes, they are. That's, That's right. right. So these this. particular, um, the purple, the first map that you had to Barton Elementary, they would receive busing. busing as well. yes. Thank you. Right. Now these students actually would be closer to Palm Springs than Barton, but I, I think um, they would have to cross Congress, yes, so. and, and that would be our, our transportation department would then assess. Uh, they're within two miles. I think it would only be within a mile or so of, of the school, less distance than Highland, but they would have to assess if Congress constitutes a hazardous walk zone and per state statute, if it is a hazardous walk zone, then we would offer a bus okay. so, so elementary age students wouldn't have to cross Congress. It is a hazard. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but yeah, just we agree. <laughs> but you're saying Congress. <laughs> Great staff and transportation assesses. I'm sorry? You're saying Palm Springs. You keep saying um, <coughs> Barton, but you meant for 201, it's actually going to Palm Springs. The blue portion. It, yes. Yes, if I said Barton, I, I'm, oh. I'd correct myself, sorry. <laughs> yes, Palm Chair. Springs. Yes, yes. For those who elect to remain in the, if that's approved for the dual language program, would that include transportation? That would have to be a, a, a board decision because that would likely incur a cost. So that would have to be a leadership recommendation and, and final board decision. It's the same with the fourth graders that we uh, often think that was the case with, uh, with the Calusa change. You can remain as a fourth grader and your siblings, but we did not offer transportation. It's the parents. Um, responsibility to transport the child. So that would have to be um, the determination as part of that recommendation to the board, that leadership would bring to the board. Currently, I don't have any buses that come to my school. All my kids either walk mm -hmm. or ride bike or they're being dropped off. I have no buses. Hmm. Right. Okay. So 214. Yes. Well, here's the right. transportation. Okay. Yes, it is. Has ever been? Small the distances are here. Um, yeah, so <coughs> you can see current zone school, South Grade, that, that portion, South Grade to Barton, it's a mile to um, South Grade. The change would, and that, that's from the center of the sack, so, you mm -hmm. know, give or take, from the, it would be added three-tenths of a mile to Barton. So you'd still be within the two-mile 
Okay. Zone. And then you can see the difference, the Palm Springs to Highland, it's about two miles to Highland, it would, it would um, okay. uh, decrease to a mile, and then the what do you think this room Highland to Barton is? portion, 2.3 would increase to three. Okay. So that's where Shane was mentioning that these students were already transported, yeah. so it just adds seven-tenths of a mile. And I, okay. Madam Chair? Yeah. So I, just so I understand for clarification, the ABC is not weighing in on any proposals no. for the dual language. We're just making a boundary recommendation? We're not. But that is a programmatic decision. Right. And having said that, I would recommend that we move. Wait, 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 public, wait, public comment. Public comment first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good recommendation. I just wanted to clarify because there was yeah. a lot of discussion thank about you. something yeah, that, that we yeah. are not going to weigh in on. And, and we want to thank you. I appreciate that. Very well, sometimes nice. we do add our comments, but we, this is And not we one say of. that there was a lot of public concern Correct. and we and <clears throat> discussion, but no, we don't. Public comments? Let's move to. Yeah, are you yeah. okay, Jason? With yeah, I, now? I just did want to. Where's my sheet? Oh, I've got it on the PDF. Yeah, I just um, I did provide the um, the printout of the community input. I just wanted to briefly review the the summation of the community input meeting that was uh, held December 20th at Lake Worth Middle. We had two speakers, and just so you know, folks that weren't there, um, uh, we had a community member, uh, Pam Bergmas. She spoke in favor of the current study. She commended the planning department on the study, also recommends to allow the dual language students to remain at their current school, stated that she has a problem with taking students out of the city of Lake Worth and busing on the punch rings, but understand why it has to be done. And then the um, city of Lake Worth Commissioner Omari Hardy, who, who has attended the previous two meetings, uh, likes what the district is doing as it benefits every child involved in the proposed change, appreciates the work that is being done. So he spoke in favor of the, um, of the study. So those were the two. Um, you know why Jason is, is highlighting this for those of us who have been here for a few years? It is different to go out <laughs> to a community input meeting where we actually get two, two positive speakers. So that, that, one, one, let's put it in that light. I can't get any possible. 100. Okay. okay, now, you ready? And, um, please fill out a speaker card at the front table bring that up and we'll call you uh, up to speak so if anyone wishes to speak Is there anyone even if you've spoken before that's fine you can still speak again no one okay seeing no uh, no speakers we are to committee discussion and action just have a, a quick question you said there's future development coming into that right. boundary is it happening now or how soon? There's one currently under construction. It's a it's in a um, it's Banyan Court Apartments. It's an 85 unit, one and two one and two bedrooms. Based on the student generation rate, which is the countywide rate, that would be anticipated. Um, 85 apartment units would be anticipated to generate seven K through five students. But we know the different parts of the. You can't apply the same rate, although we, we have to, but there, as a demographer, I know there are areas of the county that it, it's higher than that standard generation rate, mm -hmm. and some areas that are lower. So we'll keep an eye on that as construction Is continues. Is there another one coming? Yes, then there's, um, uh, there's an 189 unit apartment complex using the generation rate that's 16K5 students. That, um, at the, at, as of August 2018, we're checked, construction had not begun yet on that one. And then there's a very small um, adopt-a-family 14-unit uh, uh, housing development, very small, okay. and that would generate about two students. Just would note the figures that you gave for the program, if the students are allowed to stay, we really go very slowly down, and then if we have more kids moving in, we may see you again in two years. Yes. Well, and, and those dual language students would phase out, but. Um, Not that quickly. It would take yeah. some time, right, especially in K-1. I mean, that will take, that can take, you know, four or five years. Sorry. Jason, um, 214B, when did it become B? When did 214 split? When did 214 actually, well, there's 214A and B. As to right. when those, that full 214 split, I'd have to check the history. Okay, so I don't it, know it, off the top not in the last no, the siblings, it, it, let's say six years, seven no, years. No, I think it's been, it was split many years ago. Okay. I don't know exactly when, yeah. 
So we would I just was curious if families were being impacted yet again. Okay. Yes, I'm not aware of when that was split. I'd have to go back into the SAT split history, but I, I don't but, believe it was recent. But it looks like you're splitting B again. So yes, does that become C? We would probably turn oh, that let's see. Yeah, it's yeah, just a okay. lot of students in that SAC, a lot to move the entire SAC. A huge, huge uh, population. I have one other question. Go ahead. You um, I know that North Grade's not part of the, the study, and I'm not suggesting that it be, but I'm just curious what their enrollment is if we're going to have to look in the future if well, the, uh, Highland again needs to move somewhere. And North grade so close. Yeah, the reason North grade isn't involved because um, they are have they're now um, they're turning K eight. Yeah, so this is the small. first year they went sixth grade. They've, now they're K six. Next year they'll K seven, and the following year they'll be K eight. So that's going to be a K eight school. Um, so we need space at the school mm -hmm. to accommodate that new middle school enrollment. So that they're going to grow as that. K-8 okay. continues so, to uh, So as in. these developments come on, uh, and as um, uh, was just stated, it's the, we're going to need to revisit this very fast, so that's not going to be an option in the future. Um, you know, we, as we reassess each year, I mean, you know, we still have space at Barton. You know, even with, even with the full proposal, Barton is um, that's right true. in the low 80s, 81%, so there's what the third year we're looking at 83 percent 1160 capacity so we have space at barn and there are